Okay, so welcome to Project Cars Racing League Australia GT3 Endurance Series. This is round one at Red Bull Ring. Um, this is currently the qualifying session. We've got 19 minutes remaining and we're watching Stone Kiwi doing a uh, lap around the A1 ring and he will be driving the 144 Lending Porsche Racing GT3 car. It's a fairly stable car. It's hard to get the most out of it, but uh, obviously Stone Kiwi is going to search that uh, the speed of the Porsche and uh, see if the uh, Porsche can come on top of the mites of uh, plenty of Mercedes in this uh, first round. We've uh, got two hours of racing coming up. Just um, check my uh, volumes through Twitch and uh, I'll be back. In the meantime, I'll just uh, put it on to uh, CXR Bowler uh, using the Acura and uh, see if he can uh, chase down Reach and uh, Carnifex, who's actually first and second at the moment.
Okay, so we're just watching Carnifex here with 13 minutes, just over 13 minutes remaining of the qualifying for round one of the uh, PCRL A GT3 series, endurance series. This is round one at uh, the Great Red Bull Ring. It's a short circuit, short lap for these guys, one minute 30s. Uh, race pace, I'd probably think that they're probably going to be two on 30, well, high 31s, maybe 32s. And uh, two hours is uh, the first round of this endurance race, all real time settings. Trying to uh, replicate a bit of a endurance series on the Xbox project cars. And uh, you can always find them on Facebook. It's a private group, group for Australia, New Zealand races. And uh, just look up for Project Cars Racing League Australia or PCRLA and uh, put a request to join the group and uh, come and enjoy some GT3 endurance racing which is going to be a mixture of two hour races, three hour races in length and also to finish off the Bathurst uh, four hour so uh, that will test stamina and uh, obviously um, driver's abilities and uh, just to be able to uh, stay alert throughout those uh, long stints is going to be a test for most of these drivers and they're going to run every fortnight and uh, I'll come back to it a bit later but I believe I think it's a seven, seven round series I might just uh, go on board we just saw Sato there come through on a flyer. We might just take the opportunity to just go on board. Just see what sort of speeds he's getting. You can see he's on a low, low fuel run. With just over 11 minutes remaining. The track will be really gripping up. You should see, I probably might see a 29 I reckon, a 129. Hole. At the moment that's uh, held by Reeves. The 130.121 oh he's just found that grass so you can see how much that can unstabilise a car. He's on maximum brakes. Just lost the rear end. Got uh, Dark Racing 40 here in the uh, number 12 Audi uh, R8 LMS uh, by Virtual Drivers, the race team. So it's Thrustmaster sponsored. Hopefully, his internet can hold out for the full two hours. He loves his GT3 racing. So yeah, currently he's six in the in the in the uh, in the grid for the race. In the standings. We'll just see what he can do. He can better his time. Is this one on thirty-one point zero one five? He'll be looking forward to uh, probably just trying to get himself up in the top two of the uh, starting grid. I believe it's going to be a rolling start. I'm not 100% sure. And clear skies have uh, been predicted for the whole event. Darky just to see what he can do coming to the end of this completion of this lap. And a 
131.015. Has he bettered that? Doesn't look like he has. Just coming out of the pits now. Is that uh, that's Reeks? Man, that's got pole position at the moment. Let's see if he can uh, manage a squeeze out of 29. See, get those heats into the say the soft tyres for this qualifying run. Most of the the teams would be opting for the hard tyres during the race. I believe I'm not too sure on the on the temperatures of the track. But I'd say it'd be fairly warm. So with just uh, under eight minutes remaining in qualifying, we're going to see the track come alive. We're going to try and get that uh, vital positions up front at the start of the two-hour race that will follow. Uh, mate, all the drivers here tonight, they're all running a wheel, wheel set up. And the game really uh, benefits the guys that are, have got a wheel set up. People can drive well in on controllers as well, but you get good immersion in the game with a wheel pedal set up. He's got Shats coming through on a flying lap just behind him. You might want to just let him go through, but Reeves will be wanting to keep the pace for his flying lap. Interesting to see. And Shads is the man that's the second at the moment, just nipping the heels of uh, Reeves. So Shads has just gone into the pits. Probably regroup, get his final, final uh, bit of fuel back in and try one more run. As uh, most of the Formula 1 fans would know, this is a um, track that Max Verstappen and his home Grand Prix, the Austrian Grand Prix. And it's always bathed in a sea of orange. And the support for uh, Max. A uh, eight, eight corner circuit, and here comes Rex. He's flashing his lights. I guess this is going to make sure that this will be easy. He's done a 29.898. And there we go. We predicted 29 pole time. Rex has uh, definitely provided that. Just go on board and just see. Uh, still got a little bit of fuel. Just run wide. Coming up to uh, turn turn two there. Remus. Remus. And run down to turn three. Tricky corner to get right. Got to really slow down. If you're coming too hot, you run very wide. Very hard to get the power down lead up here to this long turn four. Now into turn five. Turn five and six up the hill. This is short little straight. There's uh, chances for overtaking here on the inside coming into turn seven. And the corner is uh, I really take a lot of inside curb, make the most of the lap. Only a short lap. He hasn't better this time. And you can see Shad's he's got low fuel at the moment. He's got a 
been correcting that bit of oversteer coming into the uh, into the corner. He won't like that. He will have to uh, regroup and try another lap. At the moment, he's still got the front row in second. And then Lamborghini. It's probably the Kozeki Racing by the looks of that sponsorship. Or the Yellow Banana. So he's previously done a 130.382. And the man uh, third, Sato, he's, he's usually a fast qualifier. So we'll see what he can pull out. Really, uh, wish had to probably get this lap in another if he wants. He's just ran wide, just pushing that a bit too hard, trying to chase down. It looks like he's going to uh, call that quits. And here we got in the number four Black Falcon Mercedes AMG Sato, third spot at the moment. Looks like he's just on an out lap. We just crossed a Bauer in his uh, Acura NSX. Just running wide, finding the dirt. That's going to upset uh, Sato a little bit. He's going to let Sato through by the looks of things. So we've got CXR Smudge. He's actually. Um, now another Acura, the 93. And we just might watch, uh, watch this lap of Sato's. This could be, uh, see if we can get him on pole. We'll just be thinking of his, where he's going to hit the brakes. He'll be getting his brake markers. Hitting it at the right spot, turning. You see he's got just chasing a little bit of oversteer coming mid-corner through the corner. That car really wants to rotate. Helps on the sharp corners. A little bit loose. He's going to take pole. At the moment we've got uh, Reaps. And uh, as he pulled into the pits, but Reaps has at the moment got pole position for the inaugural. Project Cars Racing League Australia's GT3 Endurance Series here at uh, for round one at the Red Bull Ring. And I don't think Sato is going to be able to make make another lap either. So I think he's uh, he's really lost a chance. Looks like Bell is out as well. Shads will be able to get a lap in. He's been uh, pipped for second at the moment by Carnifex, who's in the pits as well. So we'll just see what Shads can do in this yellow banana. Qualifying's over. Got nuclear chocolate uh, in 10th spot. He's still out trying to do another lap. He's uh, in doing 33s. Just trying to come to grips with his uh, Audi R8. Now they run down to uh, turn three. He's pulled that up nicely. Just, just struggled to get the power on a little bit too early. That would have cost him. This looks like he's really holding a nice line through turn, turn four and into five. Get a good run with a good, good, uh, good pace out of that uh, turn six. Gives you a good run down to the uh, second last corner, turn seven. Which is also, oh, he's just coming to the pits. He realises he's not going to make that time up. So there's the. Uh, you just have a look to see nuclear chocolate. See if he's. Uh, doesn't look like he's going to finish that lap, so there we go. Qualifying is over.
So Reap's taken pole position for the inaugural GT3 Endurance Series with Carnifex in second. We'll be sharing the grid, the front row with Reap's, and then Shads and Sato uh, on row two, and then Bowler and Dark Racing on row three, Stone Kiwi and Smuggler on row four, and rounding up on round five will be... I uh, missed it, actually, but uh, so I think Smuggler and Nuclear Chocolate a couple of guys had some penalties, so it looks like we're going to have a formation lap. So they'll have two minutes here just to get their setup loaded. Get everything sorted. So ten runners for tonight. Looks like we had a couple drop out. Uh, they'll just be preparing themselves too for a two-hour race that they're going to be enduring behind their, their sim wheel, their rig. It's time to uh, see these cars roll off for their formation lap. And here we go. So Reaps is going to lead the field off here for the uh, formation lap. The guys will be making sure that they can get those tyres up to working temperatures. It's going to be very interesting to see what they're going to We're going to have a look at their fuel loads. That might be uh, wise. We've got a full tank for Reaps at the moment. And uh, 99 litres there for Carnifex. So he's going to try and do a bit of an undercut. Shadz is a full full fuel load, as is Sato. Bowler will be a full fuel load. Dark Racing full, as will Scholz. Stone Kiwi, he's, he's running a very low fuel load in the Porsche. That'll be very interesting. He's aiming for a, th a two-stopper. Does. I just got a full tank and as nuclear chocolate as well doing the same thing they looking like that they, they might be running a plan into a two stopper I believe uh, we've got uh, Reaps he's got a uh, Thrustmaster TSX uh, wheel and uh, he loves his racing fair, fair uh, racing doesn't like the uh, shenanigans that can go on between people. And he's got the uh, number 86 HTP Mercedes and his teammate Carnifex in the 84 HTP Mercedes is going to be lining up alongside him. And this is round one of the uh, Project Cars Racing League Australia GT3 Endurance Series. And we're going to have two hours around the Red Bull ring around one and uh, we'll just see if they're going to line themselves up to a breast or if they're going to be planning it looks like they're going to be running single file with the safest option running up to turn one for the first round and as you can see we've got um, dark racing I think it was come straight out and we've got one of the Nakiris out spinning with the uh, it's taken outside nuclear chuck at the very back there 
And that's not a good start for Bale uh, or for Nuclear Chocolate, unfortunately. And Bale is going to have to make an early kiss off. He's lost a winnie. And um, Nuclear Chocolate looks like he got away with it, but he could have a bit of damage. But we'll just go back to the uh, front of the field. And uh, Reaps is just gapping a little bit. Got a second, just under a second gap. And this opening third of the track. Carnifex in second, and then he's got Shad in third, with Sato in the number four Black Falcon in fourth, Dark Racing. Uh, he's just getting uh, under, under pressure there with uh, Smudger, and he's coming back at him. Dark, he's made that move, he's got the inside again for uh, turn five. And uh, Smudger's right in the thick of things, he's got uh, the Stone Kiwi in the Porsche right behind him. So obviously as endurance races are, they, there's always um, there's always about strategy. We know that Stone Kiwi's running a light fuel load in that Porsche. Not too sure if he's planning a two-stopper or not. This is a beautiful little run up to uh, turn one uphill. Helps the car slow down. Still tight tight right hand corner, you can see the cars in the background just taking a little bit more track than what they uh, need. And oh, and we just had, um, looks like Shaz has just tagged Carnifex there, just as he was, um, oh, just as he was coming in there. That's unfortunate. Carnifex has now dropped himself all the way down to eighth position. Chads won't be pleased with that, he normally races clean. It looks like he just came in a little bit too hot, just cut in the saddle. He's just run off the track as well. Not a good start by some of the drivers, and we've just got uh, we've got Stone Kiwi making move now up to fourth. He's made that move on Darky. He just, he just can't help, the rear has just got on him. Yeah, we'll get all those, uh, all the jitters out. It's the first time a lot of these guys are running in this, uh, in this uh, league. And it's the first race of the league. And nuclear Chocolate now is right behind Stone Kiwi. And Sato's will be kicking himself that he's, he's made that mistake. Giving up second spot to Shads. And we'll have a look a little bit later, see what the fuel burn some of these cars are doing so we can uh, gauge later on in the race how you know, much fuel they're going to need after they've had their pit stops. Run to the flag. And Reaps is uh, well and truly out in front now, just four and a half seconds in front of, of Shads. Just see the uh, battles are starting to uh, just start to come out now. It's like Stone Kiwi. He's having a little pressure pressure with. Um, he's made the move there. I'm just trying to think of who it is. Ash. Ash there on in eighth. Sorry, I've just got to get used to all the uh, all the drivers in this league. Next round uh, should be a lot a lot easier. I'll get used to the cars and the liveries and who's driving what. Carnifex is um, after that little tag that he got cop from Shads. He's found himself in six, 12 seconds off the lead. Long way to go. Know that anything can happen, and it normally does in these endurance events. And it looks like Sato's just uh, climbed on the back now of, of Shads again. 
just see Reaps just taking his Mercedes up to turn three. He escaped a uh, bit of the carnage at the first first few corners. A lot of the guys probably would have experienced their full fuel load and tyres not quite up to temperature. So all a new experience for some of these guys. Sato, who's a very fast driver, just got to uh, put that together for uh, multiple laps, to get the mistakes out of his driving. He's, he's been getting better and better, more consistent throughout the year in the leagues that he runs in. It's been the first first race of of this actual league, Project Cars Racing League Australia. You can find them on Facebook, uh, PCRLA. It's a private group for Australia and New Zealand races on Xbox, Project Cars 2. Send them a uh, request to join. And if you're interested in doing some long endurance racing in, on, on, in the GT3 cars, ranging from two hours to four hours, Have a look. We've got uh, Carnifex come out coming up to uh, the smudger. He's in the Acura. He's holding fifth spot. Oh, he's just um, slowed down. He might have had a little problem coming out of that uh, corner. He's still fighting for his position. He's let Carnifex go through. So Carnifex now is in fifth spot. Trying to catch up to the back. Now on the tail of Darkie in fourth. He's about five seconds up the road. And there's been a bit of action in uh, the first eight minutes of this race. There's been a few little, uh, a few little spins and a couple of little uh, touches. And unsettled a few of the cars, and we've just got um, just there. We there. We got up in front. What was it? Darkie's taking a move on Sato. So Sato's made another mistake somewhere. Darkie's around the outside, he might have to have a slow down. Sato's just not quite happy with his car set up at the moment, I'd say, with him having a few little mistakes, probably two or three mistakes so far in this race. We're only 10 minutes, 10 minutes into the, the session. Can Darkie poke his nose down? He'll just maybe follow and up behind. We can also see um, Smudges coming back at um, Carnifex as well, putting a lot of pressure. Here he's, Carnifex is uh, having to defend his line. going on. I'll just take my, my um, eyes away for a minute and uh, look we've got Stone Kiwis is caught on the back of this pack. Battle for fifth. And it just looks like um looks like coming out of the pits. Oh that's one of the um, Lamborghinis coming out. And that's Ash, who's had an early pit stop, maybe for repairs. And he's found himself already one lap down. It's early start stage of the race. And 
and uh, Stone Kiwi now is just trying to tag onto the back of, of Carnifex, but uh, we've still got Dark Racing putting a lot of pressure on, on Sato. Basically, uh, this is round one, and it's actually a nine-round uh, series, and uh, in a f we run every fortnight. And then round two will be at Hockenheim GP. That'll be a two-hour endurance race, and then we then go for round three to Catalonia GP for another two hours, and then Imola for round four. It's a great race track these GT3 cars, that's another two hour endurance race. And then for round five, the famous Spa, Franco Champs. That's uh, the three hour race, so that's gonna uh, throw a few uh, things up during, during that race. And then we then go to Italy for Monza GP for round, round six, which will be a two hour race. And then round seven to Bruno, two hours. Now that's a track that uh, with its uh, up and downs in indulations of uh, the Bruno circuit. It should uh, provide some really good racing. And then the penultimate round will be at Road America for a three hour event. And then the final round, round nine, is at uh, Bathurst for a four hour. So um, that should be what everyone is up to, up, up for for this series, and uh, it's definitely going to test their stamina and their um, endurance. Is what it's basically all about. But uh, a lot of the guys on the uh, console, they used to only, you know, an hour sort of races. So uh, testing their ability here for two hours uh, behind the wheel, and and then three, and then a four hour as well. It's going to be uh, very draining. And no breaks in between, no driver swaps. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a challenge for these guys. So he's just still holding on to third. He's, he's six seconds off Shads. And Shads is only four seconds. He's holding the gap roughly to uh, Reaps at the moment, being that four seconds behind. And uh, Carnifex is actually in the pits, maybe for repairs and... Uh, I'd say maybe full full fuel load has gone in. He's definitely there for repairs. He's been sitting there for a little while. And there he goes, he comes out. So let's put nuclear chocolate after his little uh, problem that he had at the start of the corner, uh, start of the race when, I forget who it was, someone uh, ran into him, spun in front of him. The lead up to the first corner, had nowhere to go. So he's got uh, Smudger 10 seconds in front of him. So he's got uh, something there dangling in front of him to try and catch and bring that under the 10, 10 second mark, which he seems to be doing. So we'll keep an eye on that. Oh, just talking to me. Doesn't want to be doing too much. That sideways action, losing the car. As you can see, that's lost him a good four to five seconds. It all adds up over the t duration of the race. Out front, we've got Reaps, who's just been consistently rolling away on the laps. He's been doing the 31s. Not so much his teammate, he's had a bit in a little bit of the walls. He finds himself in eighth spot. Kind of fix the man with the beard, as he might be known. And um, is the organizer, him, both him and Reaps, of this series. And they've um, got some good plans for it. Running on a Saturday every fortnight. And 
sure this race is going to uh, heat up as the time as the time ticks by. Usually do after they uh, do their their pit stop and uh, their fuel loads. Some people get them a little bit wrong in the last uh, 20 minutes to. Uh, 10 minutes remaining of the race always seems to hot up in these endurance races all the races I've ever been involved in so Reap's uh, he's, he's, uh, loves his uh, his, uh, his Michael Schumacher fan and uh, he's, he's come he's been very active on the Xbox front for uh, some time since uh, Forza, I think it was Forza 3, he's been racing in series online and uh, he's only just started playing Project Cars only the last month or so and uh, enjoying it enough to uh, try and get this series, this, this actual uh, league was, was originally uh, started way back in Project Cars 1 but never got off the ground so it has been around, but just laying dormant. And uh, Reaps has obviously uh, been in contact with Carnifex and uh, thought, why don't we get this thing going again? So uh, the idea that they originally had. So uh, they've done it now with Project Cars 2. And uh, got a good little sign up, about 12 or 13 drivers. Uh, we've had a couple of dropouts actually uh, already tonight. Uh, currently nine running. So that's still enough of a field to uh, make some entertaining racing throughout this two-hour event. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's won. I'd, I'd imagine he's, he reaps has won uh, some championships and also a front-runner in a lot of Forza series. I originally started playing way back in Forza 5, near the end of Forza 5, more Forza 6, and uh, the Australian group, and that's where I got to uh, know Reaps. And... Uh, He's a very, very tough competitor uh, when, when it comes to it, so a bit always fair, and uh, but always super fast and, and uh, smooth, so it's got all the attributes to be a, uh, a good sim racer on the console, and just a, uh, a good bloke all around. And uh, looking at Shad's here in the yellow Lamborghini, the, the 93 Kozeki. And uh, he's, he's uh, been around for, for a while now on Project Cars 2 in uh, OzNZ Combined Racing League. And he's the inaugural actual winner of the uh, Triple Crown Racing, the Triple Crown actual um, cup. Where uh, the league they do uh, Bathurst 1000 and Le Mans 24 hours and also Indy 500. So he's been lucky enough to win those three and be awarded the uh, Triple Crown. With an award coming his way very shortly. And um, yeah, he's, he's been uh, very, very super competitive and very fast throughout 2019. Just see, he's, he's actually caught up to um, Reaps. He was four seconds behind. He's now two and a half, so he's made up a second and a half over this period of time. And uh, he's actually running the uh, Logitech G920. He's been running that. And he's uh, from Mount Gambier over in South Australia. Uh, the the uh, people might know that the famous Blue Lake, and um, people go cave diving all around there as well. It's, uh, Nice little pocket there of South Australia, uh, right near the Coonawarra wine region. So, um, yeah, it's a nice little little town. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's also won the uh, Daytona 24 hours. He's won that uh, twice, like two, two times back to back, the LMP2 cars. And uh, his all time driver that he loves is Alan Pross. So, with both got uh, some Formula 1 fans here leading the race with Reef's, uh, you know, Michael Schumacher fan and then uh, Alan Prost fan here with Shads. And uh, he just wants to, uh, he, he, he spent the last uh, season just recently running a, um, I think it was a, a Honda NXX, uh, the, the Acura. 
and uh, took the championship there with uh, with a Cosmic Robbie a driver in a uh, team's event. And uh, here he is now in the Lamborghini and he just wants to uh, try something different and uh, enjoy the Lamborghini and setting it up and having a good run. And Sato, he's uh, got some pressure with Dark Racing. Still, this battle just continues. I think this is going to run throughout the whole race as long as Sato can keep it on the black stuff. And again, he's another G920 uh, user and um, he's based in Melbourne. Oh, just taking it a bit too much of that curb, which has unsettled the car. But he's been able to rejoin the track. We've got Carnifex just behind him, but he's actually a lap down. After having to make that pit stop earlier. And uh, Sato's had a uh, good little bit of history there. In the, the last uh, GT3 championship he was in, he uh, got the fastest lap in each race. And there were some very competitive uh, drivers in that series. And then uh, he actually was third place in the Indy 500, which was a good run. And also, again, third place in the Le Mans 24 Hours. So that was held earlier, only about a month ago, actually. So, um, yeah, he's uh, definitely, his aim is to just show a bit more consistency in his lap, in, in his race. And, uh, improve on that race craft. He keeps things interesting, that's for sure. He's always chasing down someone. He's, uh, he's, he's got the pace, but uh, yeah, it'd be better him to see him chase down the leader more often than uh, mid-pack mid all the time after he makes a few little mistakes here and there. There's a lot of mercs in this, in this series. Got a little bit of a mix up with Shad's there in the Lamborghini and Dark Racing in the, uh, the Audi R8. And then we've got the, also the Acura, so there's the, the four makes. Oh, five and the Porsche, that's five, so that's not too bad. Good mixture of GT3 cars. And then talking about the Porsche, we're looking at the Landing 144 uh, 911 of uh, Stone Kiwi. Again, another uh, another driver that I've uh, had the privilege and uh, have have met over uh, back in the Forza days. He's a funny, funny little character. He loves his motorsport. And we've just seen what 24 minutes roughly of this race has uh, has been run. Uh, he's uh, still on the still on the lead lap. He's been these last laps were 32. He's comparable with actually the leaders. Shad's is the fastest man on track at the moment, doing the 31 the previous lap. Slowly catching on the back of uh, of Reeves at the moment. So it's going to be interesting. Maybe he could get on the back of and uh, be challenging for the lead in the next uh, five laps or so. Imagine most of these cars will be running for the hour before they need to pit. Some of the other guys did actually have a low fuel load. That's what a lap his reefs is doing. It's done a 32.2 and uh, Shad's is still in the 31.8, so definitely catching him. As that fuel load's coming down on that uh, Lamborghini, it's really coming into uh, Shad's. Uh, hands always get more comfortable in it. One of these two. We might just uh, go go on board with uh, Shaz and just see him chasing down. He 
has had to uh, correct a little bit of oversteer when we just jumped on board. We'll take the run down to uh, turn four and then into turn five. It's a downhill run. We've got to really line this corner up well to get the power on nice and early to get into turn six and up the hill and down this short little straight down to turn seven. Just imagine in the Formula One, this all this area, every a lot of this uh, this track is all covered in orange for all the fans from Max Verstappen. He's brought that under two seconds a gap now. Just around 2:35, and on the brakes. About three quarters of uh, the fuel left in his tank, 77 litres. Another corner that's very hard on the brakes. The full, full uh, application of the brakes really slow this car down, down from 230 down to around about 90 k's. A lot of punishment on the brakes. We wanted to try and make sure they keep they, those brakes cool. This is another corner that can easily unsettle the car, take too much uh, speed into the corner, we'll see you uh, understeer out, and not get that drive down to turn four. So there's a lap on board uh, the man that's coming second at the moment. Just kicking up a little bit of dirt, chasing down, and we've had another drop out at the moment. Not too sure who that was. Just go down. Looks like uh, JB Racing and then Baylor is disconnected. And also Ash is the last one that's actually disconnected. So that's unfortunate for those guys. But the battle for the lead is really heating up. Let's have a look at what sort of penalty we've got there in front of Reeps at the moment. He's it's got a 10 second penalty. That uh, could be costly at the end of the race. He doesn't want to do too many more of them, so we're on lap 19. And uh, yeah, the only one with a penalty overhanging his head for the end of results. So uh, that could be costly. He's just come up to some lap traffic. Uh, that's nuclear chocolate he's coming up to, to lap, in the Audi R8. And uh, nuclear chocolate should uh, give him a little bit of uh, space to uh, swing by. There he does, lets them through. And that's uh, made uh, Reeps happy and he's appreciative by um, showing him the uh, flash of the, the rear brake lights. Very sportsmanship of Reeps. And uh, he's just still holding the, just a second and a half gap on Shats. Definitely know he's there. We've seen that yellow Lamborghini in his mirrors. And Shaz will be hoping to uh, just put him off and uh, force him into a little error. Shaz won't need much. We saw that earlier. If uh, just a little bit of a, a space and he'll, he'll go for it. And he, he, uh, 
He had his nose up there in Carnifex early in the lap two and uh, just touched him just slightly, which uh, unsettled Carnifex and uh, looped him around into uh, turn turn two, I think it might have been. Up at Remus. And it looks like nuclear chocolate has come in for pits. He did actually start on low fuel though, so you can just see um, his pit crew getting ready for him. It's a long pit lane. This is uh, a bit of torture dragging down through there. You see the crew uh, just eagerly awaiting for him. And if we just quickly go to his speeder, you can just see, yeah, he's low on fuel. So this is a scheduled stop for chocolate. And he did get a tag early on in the race, so he might have a little bit of repair to be done as well at the same time. And he's just waiting for the fuel to go in by the looks of that. Everything else looks all right. The uh, temperature's looking fine. See, they've just sort of reset themselves as he's sitting there in the pits there at 101. So the car's looking fairly healthy. I wonder if this is a, uh, he probably got this as a, filling this right up and he might, might be able to scrape home. It'd be very close if he can. We'll have to see what his fuel burn is, but uh, yeah, he's gonna, it'll be very tight. See if he can do a, an hour 27 on one tank. He's a smudger, just letting the uh, leaders go through, just getting laps. And he's in the Acura, he looks like he's been in the wall, his bumper's there, nearly hanging off. Front spoiler. That won't be uh, doing him much good with his downforce, he looks like he's very struggling. Looks like he missed coming into the pits actually. So, um, yeah, you'll be looking at it obviously coming in. And now Shad's is putting a lot of pressure here for the lead. We've just been raising him for uh, 33 minutes. And uh, Shad's has slowly been catching reaps. Had to pull in a six second, six second lead that Shad's, uh, that reaps had. He's brought that down right down to under a second now. The Lamborghini's looking really good. Reese will make this uh, this Mercedes very hard to pass. He won't be letting it out without a fight. The HTP 86 Mercedes. But uh, we're gonna have Shads, we'll have the benefit of a nice slipstream next couple of laps. Just see Sato and Dark is still uh, close in battle as well for third and fourth. Well, that was close. Shad's just getting on the power early and uh, the rear stepping out just a touch. Is that trying very hard at the moment? Reach will just be concentrating, hitting those brake braking points, keeping the car stable. One little mistake is all Shads is going to need to take lead of this motor race. Round one of the um, of the uh, Project Cars Racing League Australia GT3 Endurance Series here at the Red Bull Ring. Only a uh, short circuit, but a very entertaining circuit. That's for that's for sure. The, uh, the truck's only roughly just over four kilometres long, actually, for a lap, 4.3. Or the old, uh, close to three, what is it, two and a half miles, so. The hills of Austria.
Carnifex is in the pits again. So his uh, his car is not having a good good time with his car. Either he's got damaged or uh, just things aren't right. Hopefully he hasn't got any sort of uh, pit stop bug or whatever where they uh, don't seem to uh, put the tyres on or the tyre pressures go haywire. But there's uh, none of that for these two. Definitely a well and truly a class above the, the rest at the moment. Uh, we've got Reeps who's actually got a 10 second penalty overhanging his head as well. Oh, we just got one of the cars actually wide at the moment out just trying to rejoin. That's a smudger I believe, yeah, in the Acura. Looks like he's uh, he's been in and had, a, uh, had the front end fixed up. And it looks like Stone Kiwi's coming for his mandatory, his uh, scheduled pit stop of fuel because he was running low on fuel. Nicky Chocolate is uh, finding himself up in sixth spot, just keeping out of out of trouble, and uh, he's doing a great. Having a great drive at the moment. For someone that's not, uh, is not as fast as the rest of the field, and uh, just shows you in these endurance races, uh, just keep driving and stay out of trouble and, and not make too many mistakes. You can really benefit and get a good result. And he's uh, going to be falling a lap down here in a minute. The leaders slowly catching up. So he'll probably be that'll be second. It'll be two laps down, I'd say. It's just sort of stabilising at the moment. Reaps has now got into the 31s so the previous lap. And that was Shaz was the chaser earlier. Maybe he's just taking the life out of the tyres by uh, chasing down Reeves, but that's not a bad thing because he's really caught up. He's made that six, six second gap on Reeves. And he uh, can really follow Reeves now to the to the fuel stops. Just have a quick look to see. Shaz has got uh, 59 litres of fuel. And it's exactly the same amount there for Reeves, but uh, not too sure on the fuel burn. Might just uh, have a look what the fuel burn is after this run, this lap. Just uh, do some calculations. Oh, and uh, lap traffic has uh, really benefit Shad's right here now. Really coming in really hard on Reeps. Now in turn, turn five and into turn six. I'm actually turn five and now into six. So the, the battle here for the lead of this race is well and truly long. 40 minutes have gone. Okay, so uh, Shads has uh, put a lot of pressure now on Reeps. Looks like the uh, Lam Lamborghini is using just that little bit of more fuel than the Mercedes, so you'll be thinking Chad will have to pit 
maybe a lap earlier than than uh, Reeves, and have to put a little bit more fuel in as well. And that's something to think about. So Reeves should be able to still come in, come out in front, depending on what happens in the next say 20 minutes or so before they'll have to pit. Chaz just darting around a little bit around and just, just running a little bit out, out wide just to uh, try and upset Reaps a little bit. So Reaps just has a nice clean line through uh, turns five and six. Really got that Mercedes hooked up. Back to Reaps and just see what sort of fuel burn he had. Okay. He's going what Shad's going to do. He's just going to pull down on the outside. Reeves is protecting the inside line up to turn two. Reeves just positions himself really well just to stop uh, Shad's from getting a run. He's held him up in the apex. Very smart driving. As we all know, it's one thing catching, but passing is another. Basically using uh, 2.3 litres a lap, and uh, Shad's is probably using just a little bit more, about 2.4 litres, and he's on the outside again, taking a run up to turn two again. Can he make it stick around the outside? I doubt it, but he'll be putting Reaps in a lot of pressure. This is where he actually... That's what exactly what he tried to do. Great move by Shads, but that's exactly what he was doing with Carnifex earlier. But uh, Carnifex was a little bit slow on that uh, apex, which caught Shads out, and he just tags him. And Reeves is fighting back. Doesn't want to let go of this, the lead of this motor race. Led the race over for, for the first 44 minutes of the race. Still now 16 remaining. And a 10 second penalty overhanging Chad's, I mean, um, Reaps as well. He's now, it's, now it's time to uh, see what he can do. What sort of pressure he can put on, on Chad's. Chad's will be enjoying this thoroughly. Good competition, nice and clean. He made a beautiful pass on Reaps. As I said earlier, he's a very, very hard but very respectful driver, Reeps. As is Shads. And that Lamborghini's just really working really well for Shads right this moment. Looks like we've had another uh, another dropout at the moment. Just sort of have a look just to see. We've got Smudger. Smudger's uh, actually been disconnected as well. So we've only got seven seven runners still. I think we started with ten. This race we started with ten, but in qualifying I think we had eleven or twelve, but a few dropped out.
And we've just got to uh, see when when will they pit. I'm looking at these uh, 40, 48. Probably looking around another 20 laps before he needs to pit. He's only going to have to be a uh, splash and dash. We're up to lap 30. Done 30 laps. So, yeah, so probably in another half an hour, roughly, they're going to need to pit. I'm going to give them about an hour 15 that they've run on fuel full tanks. So uh, we've got uh, Sato is now got in front of Dark Racing. we've missed that but uh, that's been a battle Ducky was in third Sato's made that spot back knuckled down which he had to do he was making a few little mistakes early on Sato just a bumper cam Dark racing. You can see how far, how quick this uh, turn turn three drops drops off, and a very hard corner. So it's like a blind blind type of apex. Audi's just screaming right at the moment. You just see how much curve that they take there on the inside of that, that final corner turn eight. The Red Bull ring. What appropriate corner here, the Nicky Louder curve. Turn one. Actually, he lost his uh, battle just recently, as we all know. And uh, Darky was putting a lot, always oh, gone really hard under the brakes. Lucky not to take uh, the back of Sado then. Good avoid, uh, avoiding the incident. But he was all locked up. He's putting a lot of pressure back on Sato. Don't know if they uh, changed the position to be a little bit of a mistake by Darkie or not. They've been doing some quick times. And only just, uh, just 20, what, just under 30 seconds behind the leaders. Not doing too bad. You know the pace of the uh, two front runners. They've been constantly in the 31s and 30, you know, low 32s. Stone Kiwi. He's been doing a great job in the in the lone Porsche. They've been doing some nice times 33 there low 33 but before that was a 32 so he's mixing it with the guys there you go 32.3 he's got that poor shorted for a mid-pack battle and he could be he's well and truly in contention Actually, looking at that, he's not, actually he's a lap down. Actually, so we've only got four cars on the lead lap, I believe. Just have a quick look at the the timings. Yeah, it looks like yeah, we've only got the four cars on the lead lap. 
And that nuclear chocolate and Carnifex are both uh, two laps down. And they're going to fight out for the miners. Should be very interesting. With uh, Carnifex has got the speed and he's just under, th under 30 seconds behind nuclear chocolate. In sixth spot. We just go back to this battle between uh, Sato and Dark Racing. Dark Racing as well. He resides in uh, the Melbourne area, around uh, around the uh, eastern sides of Melbourne, I believe. Drives a truck for a living, and uh, he's the famous Lego man that we see up at uh, Mount Panorama for the Bathurst 12 hour. It used to be also for the Bathurst 1000, but he really fell in love with the GT3 cars up there at Bathurst and uh, goes back every February, late January, for the 12 hour. And uh, he's been known to see up in uh, the social media and also actual uh, team pictures as well with the Audi team, the Lego man. Lego man head, so a uh, bit of a celebrity. He just lost ground to Sato, just fallen off the back of Sato. Sato 15 will be happy with his third at the moment. Being still over an hour remaining in this race, anything can happen, he can still. These, both these guys can still win this motor race. Round one of the of the uh, P PCR LA, which is Project Cars Racing League Australia, GT3 Endurance Series. Sato in the number four Black Falcon, Mercedes AMG. And there's Nuclear Chocolate just passing. Bye. And you can see he's just holding his own at the moment. A minute, minute behind Kiwi. Which is almost, yeah, three quarters of a lap behind. But uh, Carnifex is uh, only 29. Ooh. That's not what he wants to do, as I said earlier in the coverage. That, uh, just choose up time, you can see the Carnifex just in that one mistake. Carnifex has made up eight seconds. An easy eight seconds. But that spin, so um, yeah, very costly over an endurance race, even in shorter races as well, obviously. So um, the more consistent you are, the better chances you have of finishing and uh, with a better result. This is uh, pretty much logic there, but. Uh, Sometimes drivers just push a little bit above their own ability, which makes them a lot slower in the long run. It can be good for a hot lap to get that pole position and be fast over one lap, but over these endurance racing, it really really shows the more consistent drivers. The drivers that are smooth and uh, can just be driving within their limits and the car. Sometimes the cars aren't set up correct, as, as good as what they'd like. And um, you just, they just work with it. it separates the uh, better drivers to the not so good. It's all a learning curve. So he's the, um, the second of the Audis that still remain in the race. Uh, the other one's in fourth with Dark Racing 40. Doing a superb job. He's in the number 12, uh, number 12, what is virtual driver's Audi. I'm just saying that, he's just getting a little bit loose. It's, the tyres have probably just seen the their best of their, their working life. A 
leader. He Shats has done a tremendous job. He's now got a five second lead on Reeps. Only uh, about 40 minutes ago, he was roughly six seconds behind Reeps, and he took a good half an hour, 35 minutes to catch Reeps, and he's uh, made that move, made it stick. <clears throat> now he's just, um, again, he's doing those mid 31s, so he's consistently in those 31s. Lamborghini's really surprised a few people here today. That's been Chad's aim, is to uh, surprise a few people and also surprise himself and uh, come to grips with the Lambo. It was ultra fast in the um, Acura NSX in the uh, previous GT3, um, the LM, or oh, what was it, we had the Intercontinental GT Challenge over at AusNZ Combined Racing League. We sort of all um, reached out and uh, helped to establish his Project Cars Racing League Australia in this uh, GT3 um, Endurance Series. It's going to be a nine round, nine round series. And uh, the racing varying from two hours to four hour race lengths. So who says we can't do endurance racing on uh, consoles, eh? Um, these guys are actually uh, defining the odds and uh, putting it on for the Australian New Zealand public that uh, want to race on the Xbox. And racing every fortnight, so it gives time for the guys to uh, have a rest and uh, obviously tune up for the next round. And if you're interested, you can find them on Facebook and uh, just search in uh, PCRLA, um, private group, so you'll have to send a uh, request to join. And uh, make sure that uh, you're from Australia or New Zealand so we can keep the <coughs> racing lag free to the best of our abilities. And, um, and round two is going to be the Hockenheim GP for a two hour endurance timed race. And round three, Catalonia GP. And round four will be Imola, two hours. <coughs> and then to start the uh, second half of the season, We'll go to Spa for a three hour race for round five. And then round six is the more famous historic Monza GP over in Italy for two hour. <coughs> and then the undulation track of Bruno, which I don't think is going to be the actual round of the uh, series. That is going to be a two hour event. That's round seven. Uh, that always provides some uh, very good racing. It looks like Sato's just in the pits while we're talking. And uh, then round eight, the penultimate round, will be Road America for a three-hour event. And uh, then finish off for the Australians, the Bathurst four-hour. That's really going to test our drivers. And here, as you can see, Saturday's just come out just behind Shad's, a lap down. And uh, he's obviously will have fuel now to the end. Oh, pardon me. But uh, Shads is uh, definitely a man with a lot of accolades behind him, winning the uh, NZ Combined Racing League's um, Triple Crown this year after uh, taking away the Indy 500 this year, um, the Bathurst 1000 last year, and also the Le Mans 24 hours this year. So uh, that was a, uh, not a mean feat, and um, he's very pumped about that. And his racing has been uh, that next level. He's actually been racing with uh, leagues overseas as well and been blitzing that. He blitzed an IndyCar series uh, with a bunch of American and, and English uh, drivers. And then um, did a V8 supercar thing, I think, as well, which folded, which is an English league. And, um, yeah, it was, was unstoppable there. So, um, yeah, he's, he's definitely come to grips with Project Cars with its handling and uh, setting up the cars and his race craft. He does uh, have a little mistake here and there. We saw that early in the race with Carnifex, but um, that was just a little misjudgment. And don't know if it could have been a laggy little bump, but uh, he's actually coming up to turn two, up to this corner here. And it's, it's where he actually made the move and, uh, for the lead of the race actually on Reaps, and that was a, a textbook move. 
and the move that he tried to do on Carnifex on lap two just didn't quite pay out that way. So um, Carnifex is still in seventh spot, chasing down Nuclear Chocolate. Not that far behind. So um, it's what endurance racing is all about. Things can go bad, which uh, Carnifex has had a few little problems. And uh, he's kept going, and he's going to find himself in a battle soon. So uh, you always stick with it. And uh, we're a lot more mature racers here, all on wheels, and uh, rage quitting is not really in our vocabulary. Um, I'll just stick it out, things can go bad. I mean, obviously, if the car's undrivable, obviously, uh, you can, yeah, a lot of the guys, sometimes they just retire off into the pits and, and watch the remaining of the race. And support the others. And he shows he's just slowly extending that lead, lap after lap. He's basically half a second faster than than Reaps each lap. And Dark Racing has to be uh, careful. He doesn't lose too much time with Sato because Sato's uh, doing the low 32s. He's made he's uh, done his pit stop. Dark he still has to pit. see what sort of fuel burn that the um, the Audi's running. We know that basically the Mercedes and the Lambo, Lamborghini, basically running 2.3 litres a lap, roughly burnt. The Lamborghini loses just a little bit more. Probably closer to 2.4 for the Lamborghini and the Mercedes just on the 2.3. And Nuclear Chocolate is uh is uh pitted. This is given Carnifex six spot. The bearded man. And the leader of this uh, actual uh, league. With the help of uh, Reaps, who's the man in second at the moment. But uh, just going to keep an eye on Darkie here when he comes over the finish line and just see what his fuel burn was. Definitely sounds a nice, it's a nice sounding car this Audi. See on that down downshift. Oh, so 28.2. We'll just go and have a look at uh, the Porsche of Stone Kiwi because he's um, he's going to have to. Uh, Maybe pit again. He's not going to see. He won't make the finish on that fuel load. He's one of the what drives is actually planned for a two stopper. As did Nuclear Chocolate, I believe. So again, the uh, Audi is using roughly a low 2 point, probably 2.2 .2 litres of fuel. So it's a bit better on fuel economy than everyone else. And here comes the uh, man that was actually second on the grid to start the race. Got spun around, as I said, in the early stages there with Shads, and then uh, things got worse for uh, Carnifex. Then made a few little mistakes, which uh, we didn't catch on camera, but uh, you could see him dropping down. He's had to make a few more pit stops, I believe, than others. But credit to him, he's been going on and uh, finds himself six on the on the road. 
and he's got enough fuel to see him to the finish so he won't have to pit again so nuclear chocolate is actually got to uh, chase tron um chase down that 37 second gap that uh kind of has on oh just talking about that he's actually coming into her for a pit stop that's very interesting So that's going to actually probably play into the hands of um, Nuclear Chocolate. He definitely had enough fuel to the end. So Nuclear Chocolate just on turn 6 coming up down on the straight to go to turn 7. And uh, we've still got Carnifex still in the pits. So that uh, hasn't played out for Carnifex. He's just leaving the pits now, but he's handing it back to Nuclear Chocolate. So this is going to be actually a run to the flag for the Miners for the last place. And just see if he, um, Carnifex actually put any fuel into his car. He did put a little bit in, so maybe he thought that he was uh, going to be short. Oops, pressing the wrong buttons there. That was lucky. Anyway, we've got uh, just just over 50 minutes remaining in this race here at the uh, Red Bull Ring. Dark Racing still out. We've Sato still pumping in times quicker than uh, Darky. So uh, I think Darky really should be looking at pitting. It's going to cost him. Though he was behind Sato before Sato pitted. Darky's going to find himself further behind. But then his tyres will be fresher. At the end of this motor race. It's a beautiful thing of endurance racing. There's so many variables to think about. How many uh, Le Mans 24 hours have we seen where cars have... Uh, conked out or things have changed in the last 10 minutes it's just amazing you can run for 24 hours in the real life and um, looks like a certain victory bar for a certain car and something go wrong near the very end even the last hour and rob them for victory so um, it's definitely uh, a different type of racing different mindset definitely don't want to be going flat out like you would in a shorter race, lap after lap. You burn up the tyres, also use up that little bit extra fuel, making you need to put more fuel in. And also the high risk of also running wide and spinning, like I said earlier. That one little spin can cost you anywhere from 5 seconds to 12, 13 seconds, just depending on how long it takes you to get back on the track. We know Reaps has actually got a uh, 10 second penalty to be applied after this race as well. I'll just double check that that's still only the 10 yet, 10 second. So he's just going to have to, if he's going to win this motor race, he's going to have to pull something out very extraordinary over Shads because at the moment Shads has actually got, what's on about, what, 9 second, 9 second lead, close to 10 seconds. So not only does he have to make up 10 seconds, he's got to put another 10 seconds on and then overtake Shades. He's then got to also make up another 10 seconds. So we know Shades has to put a little bit more fuel in during the pit stop than Reeves will. And he might have a little bit of damage as well repair Shades after uh, knowing that he had a little contact with Carnifex earlier on. And that's if he has deemed, if he uh, selects that to be repaired, he might not have that selected in the pit stop. You can change all that.
But the uh, Mercedes so far has been outclassed by the Lamborghini of Shads. He's coming down now to take uh, the start of his 47th lap. We've just over, just about 49 minutes remaining. There's still plenty of racing to go. Zeki, yellow banana, Lamborghini. Number 93. It actually would be would look really good I reckon with the uh, that blue, the uh, aqua type of blue on a uh, early morning or late late afternoon race. Duck is still staying out. He must be getting close for a pit stop, as is the leaders. About 16 litres, so his burns, as I said, was about 2.2 litres a lap. He probably only got another five laps or so. Probably five laps remaining before he has to have a pit. Reaps is an 8.6 and uh, same as Shad, so they'll be in the next three laps. Two to three laps. So I envision that uh, both uh, Shads and uh, Reaps is going to need to roughly put in around about 62 to 65 litres of fuel to get to the end. Probably about 65 to be on the safe side. So we'll just watch, oh, is uh, Sato's just running a little bit loose there on the exit of turn eight, coming onto the main straight. So we'll just see how many, how many much fuel Shads ends up with 70 would be a very safe safe margin I think um, maybe I caught it a bit wrong with Carnifex I think that uh, before when he only had 78 litres of fuel when he came in for that pit stop maybe he was going to have run short that was around about 10 minutes ago So yeah, he's put in, he's got 70 litres, so he's got enough fuel to the end, or more than enough. So he's taken on a little bit more fuel than what he needed, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Reaps does, what he's going to do in reply. My calculation says that he will only need roughly 70 litres to finish this motor race. Be a wise man to pit in this lap. He could get another lap out of it. There's not much point. It looks like he's going to do that next. He's going to squeeze out an extra lap. Fuel burns about 2.3 litres a lap, so he's, he's got enough for this lap. We 
know the uh, Audi doesn't use much fuel. Dark has still got a little bit of fuel remaining. But I think the enemy comes after he's pitted. As long as Sato hasn't had too many, uh, too little mo moments. I think Sato's going to have a bit of a gap on Darky. Then again, Darky doesn't have to stop for that long with fuel either. He's not that thirsty. About 0.2 of a litre less fuel per lap. I'm sure we'll all see uh, Reaps come in on lap 50 for fuel. The 43 minute mark, 43 minute remaining mark, I should say. An hour, what have they been running for? An hour, 17 minutes. And here he is in the pit lane. And let's see how much fuel he comes out with. Said my calculations on the fly with roughly 65 litres, but 70 would be uh, safety just in case I have to do that one extra lap. Darky could actually see himself uh, leading this motor race for a few laps. Getting that fuel in. Here comes Darky now onto the pit straight, starting straight. And as it shads, he's just putting in a bit, bit more fuel than what I thought that they were they really needed. Maybe a bit of damage repair. As the sign says up there, hashtag don't crack under pressure. So definitely had a little bit of repair, probably mechanical damage. So he's lost out a lot to um, Shads and uh, the man that's leading them temporarily, the motor race, Dark Racing 40, in the uh, Audi R8 LMS, doing it for the gamers by the looks of that. Uh, see if we can go actually uh, on board on here with uh, Darky. Well, it looks like he's actually coming into the pits. The seam try struggling to pull up the car into that pit lane. You've got to come down to 60 kilometres an hour, right on the mark. So there he goes, handed over the lead to Shads. He what finds himself, he's made a big gap there on, um, on Reaps, 26 seconds lead. That cost um, Reaps a lot of time in the pit lane with that repair. Very unfortunate. And we've got uh, Carnifex actually now, just slowly creeping up on that nuclear chocolate. Only eight seconds behind, running extremely wide. Just lucky not to hit the tyre wall there. Coming out of turn one. He was on the power and he didn't lift. Not scared. Teammate to Reeves in the HTP Mercedes. And that's something there that uh, Nuclear Chocolate will be hoping he can hold on to that sixth spot. And Sato is now is uh, in a battle. Here we go. So Darky has actually made... Well, my prediction was totally wrong. And Sato's done the um, under-over. 
over under. <laughs> Switch back. There's a drag up to turn three. Dark is being brave on the outside. It's never going to work. It's a long corner to try and stay on the outside. And Sato has made that stick. Maybe Sato made a few mistakes because I really thought that uh, the times that Sato was pumping out, he should have been further up the road. But uh, uh, as I do remember as well, Darky won't need as much fuel. We've got 86 Sato, and Darky will probably have maybe around there 75. Again, they put up a lot more fuel than what they really needed. With the main with the time remaining of the race. I think they've been a bit generous with fuel. I will learn that for her into round two. Stone Kiwi. He's gonna, unfortunately going to have to pit again. I was going to say that he could be in a battle for the fourth, but uh, not to be. This is where the battle of the race is at the moment between Dark Racing and Sato, 15. Ducky, uh, a bit wild on the exit. Let me gather the car up. Turns five and six. It's going to be a good feeling when you get those corner right and get some good speed down into uh, turn seven here. Downhill run onto the main straight. Sato's just pulling away just that little bit over Darky. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't uh, dismiss Darky for third for the final podium spot. He gets that taste for that podium, he won't let it go easily. So you'll uh, and we know his tire life will be a little bit better if they change tires that was. They might I'm not too sure. I'd be on the hard compound. Looks like uh, Carnifex has made a little error. He was only eight, eight seconds behind. He's further behind now by looks of things. So that set uh, nuclear chocolate in a, in a good spot. Let's we'll see if, um, pretty sure nuclear chocolate has the fuel to the end. Yeah, he's got more than enough fuel to the end. As does Carnifex. Saying Kiwi's going to have to pit again. And we know the rest don't have to pit, so... Someone there spinning. Any of those guys? Not too sure. That nuclear chocolate. Doesn't want to be doing that. He's got the uh, the chance to finish him in the uh, six in the top six. Started the race with ten. We've had three actually disconnect or or, um, or retire. 
This is a shame. It'd be nice to have seen uh, the 10 cars finish the race. There's been a lot happen, so if anyone that was racing and disconnected, and actually, I mean, retired because they were unhappy, just look, it could have been uh, up here. Oh, just nuclear truck hold onto it. That would have had um, Sato's heart going. Well done. Keeping it off the uh, racing line. Gathering up. But yeah, definitely, it's uh, one of those things. You know, things might not go right for you early on in the race. And um, stick with it. You never know what might happen. And uh, look, we've got 33 minutes remaining. And that's sometimes even more than just a normal standard league race that a lot of people run. So uh, plenty can still happen. We've got four cars on the lead lap. Any of those cars can still win the race, theoretically. And look at the man here in third position at the moment, Sato 15. His aim for this series is actually to run these consistent times, try and get those mistakes out of his racing. We know his race craft is generally very, very good. He's a very fair racer when it comes to uh, close battles. And here comes Kiwi, he's actually uh, now taking his final pit stop. Either he just hasn't had the uh, pit strategy set right, or maybe he's been running softs on this car and just to try and be competitive with the others and, and realise that they don't last the distance and then broke that up into three segments. But that puts Nuclear Chocolate, I believe, on the same lap now as, um, as Kiwi. And the man that was actually started on pole is now in second, Reaps. Who um, led the race for 45 or 40 minutes until uh, Shads uh, took him up into turn two with a beautiful textbook move. And he hasn't looked back since, Shads, but um, Reeps has put a little bit of pressure. He's been unfortunately in the pit stop. He had to have some mechanical repairs done on his car. I'm not too sure the settings either if they got pit stop errors um, included in the game and it'd be uh, very unfortunate if that happened to Reeps, but in real life, these things can happen as well. We've seen that with uh, in our V8 supercars. You see um, the guys have had problems with the, uh, the, uh, the nuts on the wheels. And I think, I'm not too sure who it was, one of the uh, leading cars. And the guy kept trying to put the wheel on but had the uh, pneumatic gun and actually only set in reverse. And hadn't had it uh, on to tighten up. So he kept thinking he was stripping the, the wheel nut but he wasn't. He just wasn't tightening it. But uh, these things can happen. So um, sometimes uh, the guys in the sim world get a little bit annoyed when you find these things are set uh, to you know pit stop errors or you have these little issues and you just got to think that um, yeah you can do everything right just to put yourself in the shoes of these leading car drivers in in your favourite series who you know could be leading the motor race or be there for a minor position trying to fight for podium and then all of a sudden they have that pit stop or something happens a part fails in the car and it takes them out of the race, a bit like a disconnect in the uh, sim world, or um, as I said, in a pit stop, you know, wheel not, not, not coming on, or car stalling, you know, electronics failing, anything, so um, these things happen, and you just got to uh, stick with it. Reaps had a uh, good enough uh, bar on Sato to still be, what, 15 seconds in front of Sato. So he's lucky there. Sato's still chasing him down for, for a second. And as I said, Darky will be chasing hard as well for maybe to get Sato to get third. They're back close together again. These guys will really know the Red Bull ring after tonight. 
after doing two hours. I'll know every turning point, every little part where the car will get loose. Carnifex, I've missed that. Carnifex has actually made the move on uh, Nuclear Chocolate. I reckon Nuclear Chocolate's had another spin. That's been uh, costly for chocolate. He won't be getting the chocolates tonight, that's for sure. But anyway, it's happened to him, but also we can... You know, it's 28 minutes to remain him. Anything can happen with um, Carnifex and also with Kiwi. He's a lot further up. He's got a couple of laps uh, leeway on these guys, but you know, you never know. Stranger things have happened before. Here we got Darky again, coming back and have a bite at Sato. Now's the time for Darky, I think. He's gonna make a move. It has to be in the next 10 minutes. Well, I can see Sato just uh, starting to uh, drive away again. I think this has been a uh, good run of events so far. He's got some high quality drivers that have been very fast, constantly in the 31s for an endurance race. And uh, the, uh, the mid-pack's around those 32, 33, so it's, so it's not too shabby. And probably some of the uh, better of the Xbox console races in Australia racing here tonight. But it's also open for all, all types of levels. Nuclear Chocolate's one of them. Usually a slight, bit of a slower driver learning this craft. Getting faster and faster every round he makes. He races in different leagues. So it's still flying away. Go actually, we've got a, uh, a camera there in the cockpit of this Lamborghini. Just firing up to around what 2 238 before he's on those brakes, really are uh, locking them up. Oop, and around, around goes Carnifex. That's going to help um, nuclear chocolate. Both those guys have been having a little bit of trouble. Definitely not over. So these GT3 cars have got those rear cameras mounted in, in the uh, in the car that makes. Uh, Makes it easier to see your competition behind you. Which I'm sure Reaps would have been uh, getting tired of in those first those, those 20 odd minutes of racing when Chaz was getting closer and closer. And just so he's not fighting the wheel at all, Shads. He's just nice and smooth. Got this Lamborghini set up just perfect. Just maybe, maybe not perfect, but at least to his liking. Let's see how he goes here with this corner. Sometimes you get a little bit of oversteer trying to get that power down early. No, he's just got it all settled. Very nice to be able to see uh, in board. It's good for uh, people trying to learn their craft too, just to see how smooth you can be. You don't have to drive erratic. The battle's still on between both Dark Racing and Sato. And 
it's going to go all the way down to the to the last last minute, last last lap. Now we look at the Stone Kiwi in that lone Porsche in fifth spot. What does it look like? He's probably two laps down. Yeah, two laps down. Maybe a lap down. Let's have a look at the timings. Yeah, he's, uh, he's only a lap down. Once he gets his lap around here, he'll be on the 62. It's uh, almost going to be uh, two laps down. Chaz isn't too far away. But he's been doing a good job, um, Kiwi, in that Porsche. Not many people take on the Porsche in the GT3s. A hard car to set up, I believe. Got a massive rear wing. But he's got the uh, relevant colours, Kiwi. And the black and silver, like the uh, silver fern. It's just got a bit of an Asian name to it. Landing. Landing Porsche Racing. Oh, we well, missed it. Dark Racing and, and Sato. Sorry about that guys, we missed all look at this side by side going through turns five and six. Dark is gonna have the inside run up to turn seven. Sato's not making it easy for him, he's gonna try and tight make Darky's turn him tight. Darky's done well. Very nice driving by both of them. Obviously Sato made a little mistake. But Darky have a chance, he's still defending. Darky didn't get onto the main straight like he would have liked to. Oh, and Sato's had a good run out of here. Sato's gonna take him up to turn two here. Darky has to tuck in. So after an hour of 40 minute racing, look at this, these guys are still at it. Hammer and Tom, you think it's only a sprint race now, but mentally they'll be drained, physically they'll be drained. Eyes will be popping out of the head and Darkie's on the inside again, he's just turned the lights on. Oh. That would have been the hard for Sato just to know exactly where Darkie was there, can't blame. Sato turning in then. The peripheral vision is not the best sometimes on these uh, racing games. You ought to do a guesstimate sometimes at the heat of the battle. Darkie was all sliding in there but still held a pretty tight line still. He looked like he was still made that corner. Even after uh, Sato gave him a bit of a tag. Great racing, great battle, the third spot. Dark is just covering that inside line. Sato's had a great run, he's in that slipstream. He's gonna try and make that Merc muscle his way up the inside. Darkie's late on the brakes. 
turns in, has a better turn in. Definitely feeling the pinch. That's a little, that's more um, like it from Darkie. Very stable under the brakes. That's the corner that I was saying earlier. You can really catch people out. You can really push too hard. Going up into turn three. And uh, run wide under steer out. I can just didn't get that turn in on that turn five. Compromise his uh, turn six up to turn seven. You can see now Sato's just got that little run. It's still too far behind. Very, very close. And this is what it would look like in the heat of the battle behind the wheel of the Mercedes AMG. You can just see the run that he's had on Saturday. And that's Lipstream. And he's made that move. He's got the inside. He'll Keep that on that inside for up to turn three. It's like a repeat from when Darky got him. Darky's squeezing to make it a tighter line. This is going to make it hard. This corner, if you come in too hot. Soto's done a good job. Down the inside, Darky's got this move. This is this is insane. This late battle for third position for Project Cars Racing League Australia's Endurance GT3 Challenge. And Sato's still holding off Darkie for third. Don't go anywhere with 17 minutes remaining. I said earlier, give Darkie a sniff for a podium. He won't he won't go home lightly. He won't he'll make it hard. He'll challenge. Just got to regroup. Yeah, you just see that last lap there. Saturday did a 30 late or oh, a high 32, and Darkie is 34, so a second slower Darkie in that last lap. Well, that was, uh, it's been very entertaining this last, last 20 minutes as they're coming up. Well, it's been the last 16 minutes, but yeah, I've always said the last 20 minutes to 10 minutes of an endurance. Oh, Sato. He's really had that a pinch. Locking those rear brakes up. Both these guys pushing ultra hard. Both wanting to take that final step on the podium. They both deserve drivers to actually be on the podium. They haven't given the leaders a bit of a uh, time at the moment. They had their time earlier, but uh, this battle is just too good to uh, let up. Chad's has uh, got a nice, comfortable lead of 34 seconds over um, Reaps. He's actually 20, 22 seconds in front of this battle. Sato will be just taking deep breaths, just composing himself again. He's got that nice little buffer at the moment. It's not a nice buffer, but just that, he just doesn't have Darky pounding right on the back bumper, moving to the side of Sato. The 
nuclear chocolate has actually uh, fallen right away from Carnifex at the moment. He's nearly a second, I mean nearly a minute now behind Carnifex. So he looks like he's uh, had a few more offs late in the stage with this uh, motor race. So I'd say that uh, the uh, concentration levels of nuclear chocolate has been uh, put to the test, to the limits. This two hour endurance race. Sensational battle here in the late stages of this race. The third spot. All the meanwhile reaps is probably just thinking what could have been. He's had the pace. He's still doing 31s, mid, mid 31s. But Shads has just been at another class, another level at the moment. He's now coming up to uh, put another lap on, on Kiwi. Nikita Chocolate's just let Kiwi go through and uh, we're going to let Shads come back through on the inside. Shads will probably just hold off. Ah, he's giving him plenty of room. Doesn't want to ruin Shads's uh, fine, fine race today. Taking out the, not, I won't say it yet. Won't put the curse. There's still 12 minutes remaining, but if everything keeps going the way it's going, you can take out the inaugural race of the Project Cars Racing League Australia's GT3 Endurance Series. Yeah, one at the Red Bull Ring. Nice Austria, the hills. We'll just go back and have a look at what's happening between both Sato and Sato running extremely wide. He's gathered that up. Lucky he didn't collect that tyre wall. Carnifex did that earlier too. He kept the booting at Carnifex all the way. And uh, just just missed skimming the wall. Oh, he's had some trouble getting that power on, Sato. It's really giving time for Darky. He's going to have a look down the inside, Darky. Well, he's not quite there, but he's trying hard. Ooh, that was always going to happen. Fighting hard for that position. They see that uh, that biscuits dangling in front of them, the chocolates dangling in front of them for third, with only 11 minutes remaining. Those moves is going to start happening. Taki was nice and truly up, up the inside of Sato. I don't think that side impact would have done too much damage to these cars. We well, hope they haven't. I want to see them both keep their racing. See if Saturday can come back at Darky. He's Darky pitting later too. You could just find that his tyres are that little bit better than Sato. No, the fuel loads are okay. Darky's got the 35 and uh, Sato's 44. Reeves has got 28, and uh, Shads is on 36. So they've all got enough to fuel to the end. They only 2.2 litres roughly a lap, 2.3 litres a lap. Now it's uh, the tides have turned. Darky's now got that little bit of breathing space. The seesaw in battle for third. It's been going on for the last 10 minutes. Ooh, Sato was lucky just to pull that off the not hit the wall. Just caught that in the background. Sato might uh, might take that as a sign and uh, surrender that third spot. Just bring it home in fourth. But the driver never gives up. Never says never when there's always that little chance. He's still 
within uh, fighting distance. Oh, it takes a little mistake by Darky. Half spin, and Sada will be right there again. What an interesting motor race we've witnessed here for round one of the PCRLA DT3 Endurance Series. Nine round race um, calendar. And uh, race duration lengths of uh, two hours to four hours. You can find it all on Project Car, on, on Project Cars, on uh, Facebook in the groups and uh, if you are uh, Australian New Zealander on the Xbox with Project Cars 2 and would like to try uh, your luck and uh, show what you're made of in these GT3 races hit them up PCRLA private group send a request and uh, hopefully we can see you at the track uh, next round in a fortnight at uh, Nürburgring GP find myself um, hopefully being able to stream that one all being well so he's just slowly making that time up again we'll just see what he's doing this lap this is uh, within two seconds he's just making that time back up on uh, Darkie time Darky did that last lap. It looks like what a 33.8 and uh, 32.1 from Sato. So you definitely see that um, Sato hasn't given up the ghost, which I thought he might have. So far they've done 73 laps. And an hour hour 53 minutes got another seven minutes remaining this two hour event the leading four cars only did one pit stop one of the other cars um stone kiwi in the porsche now i think he hasn't had too many troubles but he actually had a uh, his schedule was three pit stops which wasn't the uh, strategy needed for this race so he's now just found himself two laps down. Shads has only just um, taken Kiwi, overtaken him for uh, putting two laps down. Ooh, Shad's then had to fight the rear end of the car, going into turn three. And uh, he surprised everyone here in this uh, Lamborghini. Field was full of Mercedes AMGs, but um, mate, he's uh, he sent the he's going to send these uh, team Mercedes um, home crop with their uh, tails between their legs. But take nothing away from Reeps, he's uh, really put up the fight. At uh, 33 seconds, doesn't really show the time that he would really have been behind. He Found himself at the pit stop with about a 20 second stationary time over normal. So that was for repairs, which for mechanical, because he hadn't got any aero damage from anyone. He had a clean race. So that uh, that really upset uh, his uh, track position. And uh, we just want to go through and um, go back here. You can see Darky's still got that uh, what, roughly a second and a half gap over Sato. And uh, Carnifex, he, um, he was, had a mixed race. He, he, was, he was fast at qualifying. He, he was uh, on the second on the grid. And um, he'll take a lot from this race, actually. And uh, just know that it's not all about those uh, one, one or two quick hot laps. You've got to really put it all in over a long period of time. 
and set that car up for a, a long race. Don't, uh, when you do that practicing and setting up these cars, don't just practice for two or three hot laps. Try 10 laps. See what the car does after 10, 11, 12 laps. Uh, with the fuel burn and, and the tyres and all that sort of stuff. We'll see how that goes, because uh, that really shows what the car's going to be like. A lot of these guys, you know, when they uh, do a lot of tuning, you hear them doing hours of tuning, testing, and it really shows. So we've just... Uh, We've just got uh, just under four minutes remaining of this race. How many laps have we got? My eye's not quite there. Uh, 76 laps by the Lamborghini. And it looks like dark racing is uh, just keeping it nice and straight. He doesn't have to push at the moment with Sato a second or so behind. These guys have had a really, really good battle throughout the whole race. Look back at the whole race, even before the pit stops, before Sato pitted before Darkie. Darkie stayed out for probably another 10 laps, roughly after Sato pitted. And I thought that was the wrong move. I thought um, Sato, because he was punching in some fast times where Darkie was a bit slower, but then either Sato's made a little mistake before uh, Darky pitted because uh, when they came out, Darky was only just in front of Sato, and Sato put a lot of pressure on Darky. And the gap has, hasn't been more than about two or three seconds since. So for the last 40 odd minutes, they, this is the gap that they've had, and it's swapped and changed probably about four or five times. It's been a great battle. A lot of action down into turn three here. We've seen a lot. And the lead of the motor race was actually into uh, turn two, which is uh, that corner there that we've just seen Chad's come through. And the hat's off to Kiwi. Doing a tremendous job bringing this uh, Porsche home in fifth. Two laps down. That's only off the lead at the moment. Um, we've still got Reeks fair way behind, so um, yeah, he's done a good job in that Porsche. And Sato now is uh, probably only this is a, maybe the this lap and maybe another lap to go. Maybe two more laps for these guys. Just depending where Shads is, I think Shads is going to have to do one more lap. So. Yeah, we'll have to do this lap and another. Oh, and, and Sato's had a great run out of turn one, up to turn two. He's on the outside. Darkie's staying there. And positions carved really well. And that was great driving by Sato too, not to um, turn actually into Darkie and where Darkie's loaded up and spin him around, which we saw actually happen to the leader with Shad. So he actually tags Carnifex there in a, a, the first or second lap. He did exactly that. Just misjudged his turn in. And just tagged Carnifex, which upset him. But when we look at Shad, see, he's um, actually this, he's got this lap to go. This will be his final lap, so Darkie and Sato have still got to do another lap. And it looks like now, it looks like um, Sato's actually surrendered. It looks like he's, uh, he had that one last, last, last ditch. Here comes Shaz, the inaugural winner of the PCR LA GT3 Endurance Series Round 1 at the Red Bull Ring. 
The two hours of Red Bull ring, of the ring, two hours of the ring. There we go. Congratulations to Shad in the, uh, the the Lamborghini, the number 93, Kozeki Racing Lamborghini. And in second, we'll see Reeps come home in the 86 HTP Mercedes. He's sort of the pole, pole sitter of the race. He'll be happy with this result. He's only new to Project Cars too. He's only been racing in the last month. He originally was in Project Cars 1, the first series. We actually, uh, he's been running a couple of series with myself. Or one series, he ran a couple of times. So well done. Come home there in, in uh, third position. I mean, second position. So we've had a Lamborghini, a Mercedes, and a Audi. R8 LMS to take the top three on to the podium. Uh, it was a great race by Dark Racing. Again, pit strategy really uh, really showed Darky, gave him track position, or maybe Sato made that mistake, but well done to uh, Darky and then Sato for, for fourth. All right, so just a rundown there. It's just over two hours of racing and 78 laps. We've got Shads taking out that victory over Reap, Stark Racing 40, Sato in fourth, Stone Kiwi in the Porsche in fifth, Carnifex in sixth in the uh, second of the Mercedes uh, HTPs and then Nuclear Chocolate taking out the final position in the Audi R8 LMS in seventh spot. And what was he, five laps down? So you can see he had three pit stops. Same key where I thought he had um, three pit stops. There's only two. That was his strategy. So, um, yeah, he's done well there. So, um, anyway, that's uh, round one completed in a fortnight's time. We'll see you at the uh, Nürburgring GP uh, from around about 7.30 uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time. And uh, until then, guys... We'll see you then. Thank you for joining in and watching the coverage. I'm Woody Lizard or Neil Haynes on this Twitch channel. So, um, yeah, hope to see you in a fortnight's time.